What an ungrateful old boomer. Hello, sassy sleuths. Evie Bug here, and welcome to another episode inside of Nancy Drew Midnight in Salem. Before we begin, let's set the mood. Off, we were just going to talk to the judge, but the conversations in this game are taking a lot longer than usual So hopefully this whole episode won't just be talking to the judge, but we'll see. We'll see how much we can get through so Okay, so there's an office over here Yes, can I help you? Oh, that's not Hi. that's not Sorry the judge. to bother you, <laughs> but we were looking for Judge Danforth's office just across the hall Why what did you two girls do? We didn't do I'm kidding Alicia Cole Esquire. Nice to meet you. I'm Nancy Drew, and this is Deirdre Shannon. You're a lawyer. Salem's best. The only practicing lawyer in the historic town limits, if you could believe it. And if you girls were in any trouble, I'd have no problem representing you. You both have that innocent look. Juries love it. What so you're saying mean? we could get away with a crime? We? No? Partners in crime? Sorry to bother you, Miss Cole. What? We'll check in with the judge. Have a good evening. What is the Deirdre? <laughs> what? Okay, so let's go and try to talk to the judge then. Sorry. You shouldn't joke about that. Why? You gonna arrest me? No, but I'd call the police to report you. I'd also recommend you a decent lawyer. Because I'm an excellent witness for the prosecution. Wow. I'm a lawyer's daughter, Deirdre. Don't mess with me. Hello? Nancy, judge what Danforth? the heck? Yeah. Hello, Ted? Is that you? Do I sound like Ted? Ted? Um, no, Your Honor. My name is Nancy Drew. I think you've spoken with my father. Nancy Drew? Carson's daughter? Yes, and I'm with my friend Deirdre Shannon. We're investigating the arson of the Hathorn House. Ah, yes, yes. Can we come in? Well, you see, no, I mean, I'd let you in, but I seem to have been locked in my office and I, uh, I need some help getting out. Well, shouldn't one side have, like, the lock, that, like, there's usually a twist, a twisty thing. Like, surely both sides don't need a key. That sounds odd. Okay, um. Yes, it's a terrible tragedy oh. for our town, but let's table that discussion for later, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, I think I'd I might like have... to get out of my office first. I think I might have double-clicked. I'm sorry, at least you could read what Nancy was saying there, but I think I accidentally double-clicked. Sorry! Okay. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about the Book of Apologies. You know, the book in Austria. At the Mosam Castle. Yes, Nancy, I would love to talk about it, but I would really love if we could do it in person, face-to-face, -face, as opposed to through this door. Do you know where I could find a key to your office? Yes, I believe I gave a copy of the key to Alicia Cole as back. Oh, well, at least we know she's where she is. just down the hall. I hope she's still here. Yeah, well, I mean, she was just a second ago. Hello, Miss Cole. Yes. Can I help you? He said you might have a key. <laughs> Sorry, I gave him my spare. Unbelievable. Does this ever end? Oh, well then, do you have a paper clip? Yeah, and if you don't mind me asking, what business do you two have with the judge? We're none of your business. The judge with a case. Anything I can assist you with? No, thanks. But I think we got it. No need for a lawyer, at least not yet. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Hopefully not. Okay. So I think we're gonna break into the judge's office while Hello? he's here. <laughs> judge Danforth. At least I'm sure that I'll he's come probably back fine. Later. Wait. What? Hello, Judge Danforth. So we I'll can't ask later. him if we can break in? Okay, whatever, I guess Judge we'll just Danforth? do it. Oh. I couldn't find your key. What? Nancy. Uh, Alicia said she'd keep a copy for me. Well, I did find a paper clip. I think I can pick your luck, if that's okay with you. Yeah. At sure, least she has fine. consent. Okay, we this got a puzzle. Shouldn't be here. too much of a challenge. So let's see. Hold to drag pin. Feel for the pin that gives resistance. Release when the pin locks in place. Okay. 
Oh wait, is it supposed to go up further? Okay, apparently it's just really touchy and you gotta be careful. So let's go ahead and do this one, and the middle one, and the back one. Okay, now which one? Oh, not that one. This one. Now this one. Okay, how about that? Still got it. Okay, we did it. How would you learn to do that, actually? Online video tutorial. Someday you have to tell me about your secret life of breaking and entering, Drew. Because you're in danger of being cool. Which, honestly, I just don't like. Someday. It's kind of funny how the Nancy Drews progress where, you know, first she had landlines, and then she got this chunky cell phone, and now she knows about YouTube video tutorials. <laughs> oh, hello, Judge. Ah, those protesters are out again. <sighs> Who talks like that? the pot. You know... This town used to be a quiet place. It seems lately there's been an element that has infiltrated our community. I okay, have no boomer. doubt one of those troublemakers locked my door and threw away the key. Now, Nancy, your father and I have discussed. Oh, sorry. I'm not Nancy. Of course you're not. You look nothing like Carson. Did your father ever tell you about the time we won fourth place at the Lake Winnipesaukee Regatta? <laughs> you see, at the time I had... 2010 vision, so I was the navigator and... Judge, this is Deirdre Shannon. She's working with me on the case. Deirdre, you're the one who tried to break down my door. Break down? Your Honor, that's an exaggeration. I was knocking. Heavily. Look, I'm really busy dealing with this Hathorne house business. Uh, being a judge is not as simple as, uh, you know, investigating during your free time. Well, we just used our free time Why is he to unlock your door. Shade? Yeah, exactly. So I'm sure you'll be willing to repay us with some answers to our questions. Good job, Deirdre. Right? <clears throat> yes, of course. What can I help you girls with? What an ungrateful old boomer. My goodness. Okay, let's see. Um... Can you explain to us how you're involved with the Hathorne house? Well, yes. The house was built by Judge John Hathorne during the 1600s, and it represented the oldest surviving structure from that era. Judge Hathorne, of course, was one of the three judges that presided over the Salem Witch Trials. Yes, and I'm sure we can read all about the home's history in Salem's museum. More recently, Francis Tuttle, Judge Hathorne's last direct descendant, lived in a small section of the house while the rest was left to fall into considerable disrepair. She was alone, except for a part-time caregiver, Lauren Holt, who had a bedroom in the carriage house. <clears throat> a few months ago, Francis Tuttle passed away, which left Hathorne House without a legal heir. According to the historical statutes of Salem, after 90 days, the house reverts to public property, the deadline of which is two days from now, at midnight. Well, I mean, Nancy does love a good deadline. I was told that the burning of Hathorne House is suspected to be a case of arson. How did the police come to that conclusion? The investigation found paint solvent residue on burnt embers, suggesting someone deliberately used an accelerant. What's he doing with his face? Thankfully, Mrs. Tuttle never had to see what became of her home. And what evidence do you have that May Perry is the one responsible for this? Evidence? Have you ever heard of recidivism? Three out of four criminals in the United States are repeat offenders. And there's only one person in all of Salem who has a history of fire-related crime. So, there is no evidence. Exactly. Not yet, but there will be. You don't need evidence. She's already been convicted in the court of public opinion. Is that what she said? No, I'm saying it. She has a history with this sort of thing. What's May's motive? What does she gain by burning down the Hathorne house? You'd have to ask her, and while you're at it, you can ask about her alibi, which she refused to give to the police. So, any other questions? Yeah, why are you such a meanie? You meanie meanie. So the Book of Apologies. Why did you really need it? <clears throat> yes, and first of all, I'm so glad you're all right. Yeah, thanks. Nasty business. 
Had I known you were going to be put in harm's way, I would have never called Carson. Yeah, Ash sure. For his help. I've done plenty of work for my father. He trusts me. I can handle myself. Yes, I'm sure you can. So I've already that doesn't heard sound very stories, sincere. But would you mind giving me your version of why the book is important? Yes. So, Judge Sewell was rumored to keep a ledger of all the accused, intending to publish it to reconcile with their families and clear their names. But he passed away before he could do so. Going to Austria for a rumored book seems like a heck of a long shot. <laughs> well, I have been under some pressure from the AW group. AW as in accused witches. Um, also, going back to the previous conversation about May, because she has some kind of fire relation thing in her past, doesn't mean that every fire that started in this town is, like, pointing at her. Like, are you kidding me? Anyway, okay, so let's see, what should we... Yeah, exactly, Nancy. Don't you think it's dangerous throwing around May's name as a suspect before any evidence links her to the crime? I think so. <sighs> what do you mean? What are you saying? What do you mean? What are you what he sounds like a two-year-old. There is no evidence against May. Yet you were saying that she did it. I just... As a judge, I think you would be the first to admit that sounds prejudicial. It, it is, is not just me, Miss Drew. Doesn't there are matter plenty of people who you. believe that May is responsible for this crime. A bunch it of people having faulty thinking doesn't make it better. Likely suspect. Actually, that the is the definition of prejudice. Yeah, Nancy. I'm not going to have this debate with yeah, you. Yeah, because you're going to lose. Is there anything else? Um, how about you stop being such a prejudiced old man? Gosh. Like, when someone po points out your faulty thinking and you respond with, I'm not the only one, a bunch of other people think that, like, that doesn't help. Your case it just means that there's a bunch of people who have faulty thinking. So, how did Francis Tuttle pass away exactly? The woman was 88 years old. The coroner confirmed her death was of natural causes. So they never investigated Lauren Holt. You need the suspicion of foul play to investigate someone, young lady. We'd like to speak with her all the same. She still lives on the estate, although for how much longer we do not know. You can also find her in her shop, Luminous Infusions. I think I she saw that might shop. be willing to talk to you. Well, it's obvious that the judge doesn't really like us, and that's okay, because I don't really like talk him to you either. Later. Miss Drew, before you go, there is something else. I don't want to help you. <laughs> You're not locked out of your car, are you? Oh, no. <clears throat> there was a... There was an incident here. Recently, someone broke into the evidence room. Oh, have you called the police? Well, no, not yet. I don't think anything was taken. Never mind. I'll, I'll call the police. Thank you for your time. That was weird. Okay, well, should we go and talk to Alicia Cole again? See if she has anything else to say? So, how did your meeting go with the judge? We got arrested. Informative, but he's not telling us everything. Don't worry. Come back tomorrow. He'll be in a better mood then. Are you Carson's How do you know? daughter? Yeah. How could you possibly guess that? It's the hair, isn't it? <laughs> no. I see him in you. It's more than just looks. I didn't know you and my father knew each other. Know him enough. If you need any help, Nancy, please feel free to ask. Good night. Okay, now real quick. In every like other representation I've ever seen of Carson Drew, he has brown hair. Nancy has red hair, and in the 29th game, uh, when we see her mom, she has red hair. So, doesn't the red hair come from her mom, and not from Carson? Anyways. Okay, so let's go and see if, let's see, I don't think we have time for a whole nother conversation, so we might not want to go find Lauren, but we could look around a little bit. Um, this looks like the evidence room. There's the protesters outside, and down here is nothing. Hello, Deirdre. Now, we didn't take the witches tour yet, so maybe we can do that. Should be in here somewhere. Do we have to talk to Tegan? Hey! Sorry about the mess. We're in the middle of installing a big showcase. So what have you seen in town so far? We decided to do the, the real witches <laughs> tour. Oh. You talked to Olivia. Yep. What's with her getup? Witch? Street magician, maybe? Everyone has to make a living. Is she telling the story about a coven living here in the recent past? 
Yeah. Why? Just bad taste. Olivia is quite the local character. I hope you don't mind if we do the tour. I want to see more of the town, and finding out a place's old superstitions is kind of a habit I've gotten into. I'm excited to look around the museum. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so does that mean we have a... Okay, good. There's our tour ticket. Okay. Um, now how do we take the tour? Oh, hello, Deirdre. Maybe we buy the ticket and then we go talk to Olivia and say that we have the ticket and then she'll take us on the tour? Hey. Hey, Olivia. This tour sounds interesting. Welcome on my tour. Thank you. Wrong tab. Wait, you're not gonna take us? Wait, what's the tablet about? Okay, so we find symbols that look like this and click it with our tablet. Hello there, okay. watch your step. In recent years, these maws into the deep unknown have opened. There was once a vast network of tunnels beneath Salem, used by smugglers during the Prohibition era. Most would have you believe that these tunnels are now collapsing. But you have to wonder if there could be something more sinister behind these sudden maws into the underworld. Interesting. Okay, so I guess we have to find more of those little um, icons. Surely there's some in the cemetery. That would make sense. Okay, here's one. These headstones bear names lost to history, but some believe they belong to those sentenced for witchcraft. A condemned witch was forbidden from being buried on consecrated grounds, but many victims were buried by loved ones in secrecy, and some may have found their eternal rest beneath these unmarked graves. That's sad. What's this? Before you stands Abigail Hathorne, helping the accused witches escape Looks like the she's grasp beating of her somebody. own brother, Judge Hathorne himself. Abigail freed many from their holding cells until the judge caught her in the act and locked her up in a cell deep within the Hathorne house. The statue was given the name Little Liberty in honor of her valiant efforts to free the innocent. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here's the Hathorne house. Through these woods lies the infamous Hathorne estate. It was common during the Salem witch trials that the lands of the accused were taken and resold for cheap. The judge himself bought many such lands and on them built his grand estate. The Hathorne house has since come to represent all the wrongs that were inflicted during the trial. Ooh, Judge Hathorne. Stand before the remains of Salem's most zealous and conniving judge. So lacking in morals was Judge Hathorne that he sentenced innocence to death while claiming the estates of the dead as his own. Unlike the more remorseful Judge Sewell, Hathorne never felt any guilt for his part in the Salem witch trial. That's terrible. Terrible, terrible. How many more things are there to see? Oh, what's this? The Salem Museum, known formerly as the Town Hall. Not only a great resource for the Salem Witch Trials, it also holds records of other interesting facets of our local history. Anyone visiting Salem does well to seek out the forbidden knowledge hidden in these halls. Ooh, what's this? Oh wow, that's a big black thing. It was a time of horror, when the witches who walked the earth were wrongfully prosecuted and thus Strip of everything. These are the ghosts you'll find here in Salem. Their homes taken, their knowledge destroyed, their lives erased. Okay, I'm officially exhausted. Let's head back to the Perry house, okay? But, Deirdre, there's more to see. Unfortunately, uh, that's all the time we have for today's episode. We got to talk to the judge and also take the witches tour, which I think was pretty cool. There's definitely lots more to see. We could probably talk more to Tegan. We have to check out Luminous Infusions and meet Lauren Holt. Don't forget to leave a like if you like this video and hit the subscribe button and tap that notification bell so that you don't miss any future episodes. We'll see you next time. Bye!